And we're back. Oh man, that was quick. <laughs> quick for us. I got whiplash. Two days for them. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> That's the biggest Shit, bitch. It could have been like three days, I guess, <laughs> if, this, if that last episode released on a Friday. Actually, it was funny listening to episode three of Homecoming. Because you're like, um, that's the uh, that's it for episode two, and it's just like, and I was like, is it really? And it like actually was in the third episode. Well, I had said that too. I was like, this could be episode two or three. Yep. Who knows? <laughs> hey, I was playing fast and loose with yes. long edits at that point. Yeah, we were. We've grown since then. We've become better. Yeah, I learned that it's a bitch to upload a f an hour-long video into a video editor to cut into smaller parts. <laughs> it's easier to just edit as you go. Uh -huh. But I'm not guessing the number anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. Learned a lot. Learning. Learning. We slowly grow as the channel does. Feeding it like we would our own children. It's almost like the more you do something, the better you get at it. Mm, that sounds like a lie. <laughs> sounds like communist propaganda. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's true. If you build it, they will come. My Is it propaganda ass. if it's true? Then it's just truth again. Is it just tr real true facts? God, dude, you can't see shit. No, I can't. But this is uh, one of those areas where they use an enemy that's never seen again in the game. Oh, it's underneath you? Yeah, the, the thing underneath. But shows up in, like, the strategy guide? Yep. And has a name? <laughs> they cared enough to name it and to get put it in the strategy guide, but that's about it. They didn't care enough to put it in another part of the game. Yep. I mean, it's kind of like in 3. It's kind of like the big walkers in 3. I guess so, yeah. They definitely have a big similar, hands. similar thing going on. But, um... I'm feeling pretty good right now, actually. We got tons of ammo, tons yeah, of Yeah, we heels. used the gun, and we still have almost 200 rounds. Yeah, and then, then 64 for that, and we already have eight for the, for the rifle. rifle so. Do we get the rifle? I feel like we I think we get it at the Historical Society, I think. Okay. I think. Not entirely. I don't remember. Harmon's like, I feel like we get it in a Winnebago on the street. Mm. Well, I just went to the Winnebago, or the... the, the RV or whatever it was. I just went to that and it just had like uh, some items and a note telling me to go to Neely's bar. Oh, right, 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 right. And then Neely's bar has the hole that was there, but it is not anymore. Okay. Dad grunts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was doing that too. <laughs> Dude, it's like it started as a joke and now it just is. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's one of those things you'll make fun of is when you're younger and then all of a sudden you're doing it unintentionally. <laughs> yep, irony becomes reality. Oh, fuck. We're post irony. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Living in a post ironic world. A piece of candy. Ooh, and there's more. Shotgun. But wait, there's more. But wait. Okay, don't wait anymore. Mm. Cool truck. Is that Optimus Prime? Optimus Primo. Hmm. Mom, where are my Beast Wars figures? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After re, because I've been rewatching it, they the dialogue or just like I guess the the flavor text for a lot of the stuff you look at is just so goofy. <laughs> like the part where it's just like he's talking about his mom baking him brownies. It's just like that stuff was just so fucking goofy to me. And it was like one after another. We kept I kept reading them, and this is like they kept just becoming funnier to me. <laughs> and, yes, I have a bad sense of humor. So. <laughs> oh yeah, since we're talking about homecoming. Because I pointed out that his American flag on his arm is backwards. Mm -hmm. So I Googled that just out of curiosity. Because, oh, we were watching something else and the American flag was backwards. Oh. Um, oh, I think it was on Interstellar. Like on their uh, spacesuits, it was mm -hmm. backwards. I was like, okay, so is that a thing? And I Googled it and it is a thing. Okay. Yeah, on military uniforms, it's supposed to be on the right shoulder and it's supposed to be backwards. And then it went on to explain why, but it didn't make any sense to me. You're like, hmm. they're like yeah, because they're always supposed to be pushing forward. And I'm like, okay. All right. <laughs> then why isn't the flag facing forward? 
I didn't get it, but it's supposed to like mean strength or something. So that actually is a, an accurate thing to have his flag backwards like that. Okay, so it wasn't just like a... It wasn't a weird, they're Eastern European and didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Or even like some, you know, like, oh, it's supposed to represent something. I also found it funny because you're like, oh, that's the whitest name ever. It's like, this game was made by Japanese people. <laughs> well, that one was made by Eastern European people. Well, this, but they, <laughs> them coming up with the whitest names is just kind of funny to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're in a black protagonist. Mm. That's the next Silent Hill. That would be sick. You're playing as Jermaine Smith mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. or Jermaine Johnson. That'd be dope as hell. Yeah, I hope fun. they do that. Well, Silent Hill needs a black protagonist. One of these times. Actually, well, I was, I was just thinking, didn't they have something like that? But no. I don't think so. It's all Travis Grady's and Harry Mason's. Mm. Right. James Sunderland's. Which, to me, Sunderland just sounds like German or something. Yeah. But. That's just a different flavor of white. Yeah. Oh, no. Can I not? What am I, what am I not getting here? So I can't go that way. Can't go back through that way. Oh man, I was just thinking was I Silent Hill with a black protagonist because like they always think of like the influences that made it. And it's like the influences for that Silent Hill could be Jordan Peele stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he draws on all the same type of influences that the Silent Hill teams did. Mm -hmm. So that would be rad. Like a yeah, lot I of, could see it working out pretty well. A lot of like um But they're doing the light uh Life of P? Is there a Silent Hill P or something like it's well, like, no, it's Silent Hill F. Oh, yeah, that's and right. And it's like the um musical F. And then it looks like they're, it's supposed to be in a and then there's Silent Hill Townfall. Hmm. I need to go look up these trailers again because I'm trying to remember. I mean, they're just teasers. The aesthetics I mean, the one for F was for. cool because it was very like, um, what's his face? The big. The big horror manga writer in Japan right now. Oh, is, Junji Ito? Yeah, it was very Junji Ito with like all the holes and stuff. Mm -hmm, yeah. And it was like plant based. You know, he's been. So they released that series for Netflix, which I thought was going to be because he's been talking about releasing one for Adult Swim that's supposed to be in black and white. Oh. And I don't know if you saw the trailers for that, I did not. but it absolutely looks great. Um, and the the trailer I think was released two years ago now, so I have no idea what they're doing with it. I never um, watched the um, Netflix one Hannah did, but there was another thing on Netflix I needed to watch. It kept putting off too, which is Love and Robots. Mm, oh yeah, Love, Sex and Robots, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, I like those types of. I uh, like the anthology. Yeah, it's just Chelsea I like animations. Was telling me when we were on the hike, she said, oh my God, you need to watch this. Like, I saw trailers for them and every time thought, man, I need to watch that. Mm -hmm. I never got around to it. And now I don't have Netflix. Anymore. Wait, no, maybe I have my mom's Netflix. Oh. I only have one. So I was like, one. Netflix is $20? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. so, but I'm like, I'll, have, I'll pay $12 for my half of the YouTube premium until I die. Mm -hmm. It was one of those, like, I put it off forever and then I got it and was like, now, if I like, I'm logged into my personal YouTube, like on my work computer. I'm like, I'm never watching an ad again in my life. Are you out of your mind? I just have uh, ad blocker, so yeah, I hate. I pretty much I don't watch ads at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I only I only subscribe to like one streaming service at a time, and when I get bored of them, I'll switch on to the next one. I yeah. don't like to have a bunch of them. I'll subscribe. It's funny. At the, same time. The, the two that I thought were the best are combined now. Which Order. was HBO and Discovery Plus. Oh, okay. And MGM Plus, just because the show From is incredible. Hmm. And it's like $6. Like, I'm like, I subscribed to one Patreon. And so I was like, if I could throw $6 at that, like, it's funny because Hannah pays for it. So. Mm. <laughs> you just take <laughs> to advantage. To me, I would have none of it. I just watch YouTube. Like, that's all I watch all the time is YouTube. And yeah. then occasionally HBO. I watched YouTube for years. Like that's all I would do is watch uh, YouTube stuff. I eventually got kind of bored of it because I wanted to watch some actual movies. So then that's when I went and subscribed to Netflix and stuff like that. But I always have a Crunchyroll subscription. 
because I fucking love anime and I will always want to watch new anime. It's funny so. I watch anime on Hulu normally because mm. they have all the classics. Like every every other year, I rewatch Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Then I watch Samurai Shampoo for the first time ever because I read like a Kotaku article where they're talking about those are actually companion pieces to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was so I went and watched all of Samurai Shampoo. My coworker talked about that actually because yeah. he was a huge fan of the Samurai Shampoo. Um, but. Uh, I was going to say something, but I forgot, so... <laughs> I got, well, after, we, after we watched um, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, mm -hmm. I went and saw, I thought, what other animes has Anaplex done? And so I got on a kick where I, on Hulu, I was just watching every anime that was made by Anaplex, mm -hmm. and that's how I discovered Erased, oh. which is like in my top five animes of all time. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh my god, watch it. It's the manga won every goddamn award, and then they made the anime, and the anime proceeded to then win every fucking award, and then they made a live action Netflix. Like, oh, it got shit. to that point, okay. which I never watched. All oh. the way, I started it, and I was like, wow, it's actually scene for scene like the anime. That's cool. So, but I was just, wait, is Erased, it's like, it's got those mummy looking demons? No. Like, okay, no. Okay, I'm thinking of something else though. Erased is about a dude who has a power that would send him. So he would be sent back in time, but usually it was out of his control and it would oh. only be for a couple of minutes. And it's like, he basically had to figure out what was wrong and fix it. He's like, for the longest time, he just ignored it. Mm -hmm. But then he was just like, oh, like a kind of like a deja vu thing. But then eventually he's like, okay, why am I being sent back? And then he would try and figure it out. And so his whole life had only been for a couple minutes at a time. And then all of a sudden, or even like 30 seconds back. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he gets sent back to 1988 and he's 11 years old. Okay, that does sound. I think I just I the only thing I did is I read the uh, I read it like the the bio for it when I was looking because that does sound familiar to me. But it's like more of a twist because like he comes home and his mom was murdered and then he gets sent back in time because like, oh I gotta fix this. And that's then it just sends him like back to 1988. Point. That's yeah. that's funny. I wonder if they took that or if they. Maybe, mm. but it's funny because he has to solve a puzzle and he's like, he goes back to 1988 with all of his knowledge, modern knowledge, but he has, still has the brain of an 11 year old. Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too, because he doesn't quite remember the events. So he'll be making conscious decisions to try and change things and then end up making the same decision Miss he made as a kid. Okay. And so it, it's very, very, it's short. It's only like 33 episodes long. Mm-hmm. But it's super duper duper good. If you haven't watched it, highly recommend. Okay. I remember going to Jesse and Chelsea's once and seeing that they had all of the manga be raced. I was yeah. like, oh my God. She's like, oh, I haven't read it. Oh. And I was like, fucking, <laughs> oh my God, watch the anime. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not much. I, I read a lot more mangas uh, when I was younger. Like, I got really into Soul Eater, but I got into Soul Eater a lot just because they didn't finish the. Or they when they finished the anime, it was not the same ending. Yeah. And man, there is so much cool shit that happens in the manga of Soul Eater that I really wish they would have animated. Oh shit! Oh, uh, here it is. <laughs> flopping about. I feel like I've gotten 15 episodes into Soul Eater a hundred times, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, ah, I've had enough of this. I remember just randomly started watching it because I had like a free anime website I was on, and it popped up. And I was just like, yeah, I'll give this a saw. And then it just turned. It just had the perfect aesthetic for me. I love that Halloween and like. Yeah. Yeah. The goofy laughing moon and sun, and I enjoy the characters a lot. Um, but there's some there's some sequences in the manga that I really wish they would have ended up animating. There's like a part where uh, Black Star fucking catches a laser beam in his mouth and shoots it back at the villain. <laughs> and it, it, the whole sequence is just fucking awesome. I need to watch Hellsing Ultimate again. Yeah, I was recommending that to a coworker. It's only like 10 episodes long, right? It's sort of shit. Mm -hmm. I remember being annoyed, so if you look at my collection of anime, Blu-rays, and DVDs, you'll see Hellsing Ultimate. Is it the whole series? No. It's half. Mm -hmm. Because when they did the Blu-ray release, they released it in two parts. And the first part, you could just buy anywhere. And then the second part was like exclusive to somewhere. Mm. And so trying to buy it online was a huge bitch. It was like, I think I got the first part of like Walmart for 15 bucks. And then the second one's like, do you want to spend $50 in this obscure place? Cause it's exclusive to it. I'm like, fuck no. And now I'm pretty sure you can buy it as one whole collection yeah. anywhere. But I'm like, well, what the fuck? Like, what am I going to have the first half and then the whole thing? Like, <laughs> so like, fucking what's annoying. what's the point? Okay, here we go. 
God, I was stumbling around here for a minute trying to find this. It's cool. Okay. Just wander around and talk about anime. Yeah, that's true enough. The only mangas I'm going to own is Nana because it's my favorite anime ever. And uh, they just started releasing the mangas again. And I'm like, but I'm just going to buy them when I find them. Like, yeah, I could go to Amazon and just buy each one. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I have issues one and three right now because Barnes only had one and three. They didn't have two. And so I'm like, well, next time I'm at Barnes & Noble, randomly, I'm like, I'll just look for two. And I like the random hunt of it all. Yeah. My other favorite anime that'll never be finished is D. Gray Man. Mm -hmm. And it will never be finished because the creator has... Or I, Dead Man Wonderland. Oh, yeah. man. Dead Man Wonderland was awesome. That, it, it's so funny because there's so many violent animes now that the fact that that one, I don't I don't know how true it is that it got canceled because of how violent it was. At least that's what I that remember hearing. That seems like a hype story. Yeah. Because I've seen be, High School of the Dead. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, so, because the, there's extreme violence. There's like molestation mm -hmm, in that. Like, yeah. So I, if that is, isn't the case, but yeah, Dead, Dead Man Wonderland was absolutely great. I loved it. And then it just, yeah, I only get like the, you know, couple episodes and then it's just done. Dude, when I watched High School of the Dead, I like, um, I had a, been up partying to the point where I ended up going to the urgent care and then could not sleep and was like nonstop vomiting. And then finally that got like the anti-nausea stuff like dissolves under your tongue like mm -hmm. urgent care gave that to me. And I couldn't sleep because of the partying. And so I'm, but the only thing I can eat and like keep down is ice cream. So I have a pint of the Kit Kat ice cream. Oh, jeez. Or not a pint, it was like a whole container of like the big container. And I'm just eating it directly out of the container while I'm in bed, <laughs> feeling like dog shit. And I just watched all of High School of the Dead. Oh, there you <laughs> One go. One day, just all I was eating was ice cream. Felt like total death. Ain't nothing better. Yeah. It's like when you're sick and like you got like I was up all partying is the way I'll put it. Mm -hmm. Um, like without sleeping. But I'm like I've taken a shower, but it's like you can't quite wash that off. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just in that state, just like shoveling fucking Kit Kat ice cream and God. watching high school at the dead. What a miserable <laughs> What a miserable existence. <laughs> Taken away from how bad I felt, I'm like, it was a pretty good time. Mm. I never remembered it. That was years ago. That was probably like six, seven years ago. Yeah. I was still in my twenties. Trying to find this. Yeah, it was it was November first because no, maybe not because it was it was a Halloween party, but that's never actually on Halloween. Mm -hmm. Victim of persecution. There it is. And why do you need a wrench to dig a hole? Because it'd be something under here. Dig with will, your hands. Will you dig? Can you dig it? <laughs> You can do it. Just put your back into it. Mm. Yeah, right. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Couldn't you just pull it out of the dirt? Couldn't you just dig around? Slide it, it to the side like a Jenga piece? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know it's bolted down there good, but I, I assume you could probably just dig under it and pull it out. Yeah. I used the wrench. I wrenched it. To get a key Old to the Bronx. Historical Society. Yeah, we just got Historical Society and then the uh, hotel. All right, we're going to the old folks' home. We can all get drunk and uh, <laughs> all get stoned, I think is what we're going to do. I, that, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Although I don't really drink and I don't smoke weed. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've been saying forever I want to get one of the super weak edibles and see what's up. Yeah, you probably have an okay time. Yeah, my cousin Mike was like, I'll go get you one right now. <laughs> He's like, I have a bunch of miles. He's like, I take like a fucking five milligram or a 10 milligram edible like all the time. Oh, that's hilarious. And I was like, I would take, I'm like, whatever you give me, I'm taking half of. Mm. I'd say just take some with some more CBD than anything because then yeah. that'll offset the uh, paranoia. But it's funny, that my it gives boss you. was like, because I talk about my anxiety, so take CBD. It's mm -hmm. the best. I do. I take, uh, I'll take some uh, tincture, some CBD tincture for bed, and it actually does help me. Sleep I was going to do good. the Kill Cliff CBDs at one point mm -hmm. and tell us that this is like $25 a can. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Their energy drinks were good, though. Like the um, the spicy pineapple Joe Rogan ones. Think what you will about Joe Rogan. I liked him when he smoked weed and talked about aliens with his dumbass friends all the time. Yeah, yeah. Don't really care for him these days, but. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not just what it was. I just it's don't not watch him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's just, uh, there's so many good podcasts now. Like in 2014, it was like, that was the business. But mm. I got one of his energy drinks because I had him at Walmart. 
And I was like, this spicy pineapple is good. I remember I was hanging out with David. I was like, you like spicy stuff and energy drinks? Drink this. And he took one sip. He's like, I fucking love that. <laughs> it's like one sip. That's what it is for me. I can drink one of these every once in a while on a whim. All right. So. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hey, yep. buddy. I got a steel pipe. All right. Whatever. We have, a, we have unlimited bullets. Exactly. We really do. All right, so now we can make our way. Making my way downtown, walking past the uh, horrors past, <laughs> and I'm historical society bound. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> chug -a -chug -a -chug -chug. Chug -chug. Copyright claimed. <laughs> oh, whatever. They're going to take all of our no money. Yeah, exactly. That's what I actually like, is we just have all the music and everything. It's like, who gives a fuck? We actually got no claims on any other music on Silent Hill 2, hmm. which is insane, because I'm like, they have like a banging ass intro track, and I was like, well, that's going to get claimed. Nope. Yep. Well, it's because we're not well known enough. It's like as soon as we become No, because they do spot checks. Like, we got claimed oh. on our first up or our second upload ever, because yeah. the system does a copyright check on you. Gotta love that algorithm. That well, automated system. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, whatever. Way back. I was talking about um, old YouTube with a coworker recently. Because mm -hmm. um, I, he's like, "Well, who do you consider old YouTube?" I'm like, "ABGN." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "That shit doesn't stand up." I'm like, "It actually does if you remove yourself from the humor of it." I was like, because that was the thing with AVGN. I was just like, I liked AVGN, but if anybody came up to me, like, quoting his stuff, like, it was the funniest shit on earth, I was like, we'll never be friends. Yeah, exactly. It was never, like, something I wanted to quote to people. I but, hated his humor, but liked his videos. Mm -hmm. I, I like his humor. Like, actually, one of the more recent, well, I mean, this one's still probably uh, a couple pickle, years old. Dude. Not the shit pickle. Exactly. It, it, well, like, no, that's but the it, pickle Rick of 2008. <laughs> Yeah, it was. No, but it was the episode where he's doing Pepsi Man, and he brings the guy from the original Pepsi Man game into it. I don't know. It's like the whole sequence with him. The guy's like, does a perfect job of overacting, and it's just very funny to watch to me. Oh, dude, I watched Board James. Oh, yeah. About a year or so ago, because Hannah and I watched... Um, I don't think she had seen ABGN, so we watched like the first hundred episodes. But we watched till 2015, because like 20... Like, that's... Like you can argue it got bad before then, but mm -hmm. I think that's that's like the the silver era um, of it. And then so we watched all that. And then I'd never seen Board James. I think you were like, you need to watch Board Dude, James. Dude, Board James is I think his better work. Yes, I, I watched Board James, and I was like, this is the best thing ever. Man. Yeah, because fucking I, and it's just I <laughs> the humor is great. I fucking love his friends in it. Bad luck Bootsy forever, <laughs> man. Fucking so stupid. <laughs> And well, then he turned it into like an abstract horror piece. Yeah, like, exactly. It was so good. And then I, I, I picked up his memoir because he released a memoir recently. And I think yeah, it puts a lot that. of it into perspective. Um, there, there probably used to be a painting here. Oh, it was probably of Alex. <laughs> Waterfront landscape. Yeah, it's a painting of Alex Shepard. <laughs> uh, Seen from the area long ago, 1820 or some shit. Yeah. Okay, whatever. But, um... It put all of that in perspective, and it really humanized him in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, jeez, Chris. It made me realize that I really wish he had made a film that wasn't the ABGN movie. Like, honestly. Oh, like, God, yeah. That movie was If he had just awful. made a movie. Like, I think if James Rolfe had made the horror film that he wants to make, mm -hmm. now I think he's in a place where he can't. He just, he turned it into a day job, but I was like, yeah. If he became like an if he made a not ABGN movie, made the horror movie he wanted to make, because you can make a low budget horror movie, mm -hmm. and it's like, and it, you know, he was yeah, and because he, he loves knew enough, yeah. Actually, I think he could have did because there he had the guy, the toxic, the uh, director or maker of Toxic what Avenger, movie, yeah. and those Toxic Avenger movies. I've only seen one, one of them, the and trauma films. dude, and it was actually pretty fucking funny. I but, actually thought it was pretty good, but I think he could have made a low budget horror film, um, and it wouldn't have like just like burned him out as badly. Like that's. That's what he should, he should have done AVGN up until the AVGN movie, and then mm -hmm. he should have just become an actual director, but instead he did the AVGN movie, which was just more AVGN, which he wanted to get away from, and it wasn't good. But there was a guy, like yeah. these guys who did a, um, you know, about a year or two ago, there was like this whole series of like retrospectives on AVGN by a bunch of different people where they just shit on him relentlessly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's easy to shit on people. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, uh, I mean, but they were fans, and it's just you know they they make good points. I've, I really I, I enjoyed their perspective on it. But one of them said that they they edited the AVGN movie. They edited like fifty five minutes out of it. And they're like, and they kind of fixed it. Oh, and people yeah. are like, release it. And he's like, I don't want to get fucking sued. Yeah, really? Are you kidding me? I'm like, but yeah, I mean, she, she should have just become an actual filmmaker. It's what he always wanted to do. It's just, it sucks that he burned himself out. He got like, stuck in that role yeah, of the angry video game. He pigeonholed himself really hard. Yeah. I think he could come out of it and start doing it now. I think if he was just Well, he's like, in a band and everything now. He's got his... Yeah, uh, but it's a, it's a video game themed band mm-hmm. and every music video is references to angry video game nerd stuff. It's just more of the same. Mm-hmm. It's like... he, But it's, it's his financial security. It's his job. Yeah, like, exactly. So he, he can't he blame the He pigeonholed himself. Because now he's got kids and he just can't afford to take that chance anymore. But I think that there's an alternate timeline where he became like a horror filmmaker. Director, yeah. that would have That's the timeline that would be interesting to see. So we saw the picture, the picture of uh, Pyramid, Head. Pyramid Head. I wanted to bring it up, but we were in conversation. Um, but I had that picture as my background on my computer for a long time. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And there's the boat. From the Pachinko machine. Oh, yep. Aww. Alrighty. I think this is where we start jumping down holes, isn't it? Yeah, we gotta see Angela again. Oh, yeah, that's right. More stuff, as if you didn't get enough in the town. So not, that's is not he awesome. looking at anything? No, yeah, I thought that might be something, but it's not. He's not even looking at it. I mean, there used to be a hole there. It's yeah, going Exactly. Out. Wait, there's something that... Some kind of documents. Documents. <laughs> September 11th. Wait, what? <laughs> wow. They you got know. documents about September 11th? Mm-hmm. I'm going to refrain from doing what I want to say. <laughs> Jet fuels can't burn steel beams. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> God damn it. I saw one a meme where it's just like dragon fire can't melt dwarven steel. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Ah! What are you doing down here? Dang, taking five shots to the face. That's what he's doing. Ah, it's crawling. <laughs> oh, where'd you go? Come on. Eh. <laughs> Get kicked. <laughs> All right, reload the gun, James. Four and stop. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. This is where we get La Knife. I guess maybe we go down further, but make sure you're checking all them doors. Oh, yeah. So this is, I believe, the sequence where we will get... This is a big knife. The great knife. It's a heavy burden. That's not a knife. <sighs> That's not a Man, knife. I That's a up. spoon. For a minute... Three Ninjas was on Netflix and I never watched it. Three Ninjas? Yeah, the old 90s kids movies. Oh, man. I, I watched those as a child mm-hmm. and they were on Netflix for a minute. And it was one of those like, yeah, I should watch that sometimes when I'm not, when I'm by myself and can't be judged. Yeah. To just enjoy nostalgia. And I'm like, <laughs> now I don't think they're there anymore. And I was like, my time has passed. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's- what I'm telling people is don't live in regret. Don't mm-hmm. be like me. Live in the now. Yeah. Well, I was Don't trying live to live in, in past the, tense. I was trying to live in the then and feel some nostalgia. Yeah. To watch a terrible. I, but the funny thing is, like, I remember reading an article where someone's like, if you've been, if you watch these as a child, go back and watch them now. They're even better now. Because oh, yeah. it's like you have an adult brain <laughs> yeah. with full like context of how corny and ridiculous the '90s were. Yeah, it's very and true. It's so all of that. Something I've been rewatching, and it wasn't really during. I mean, I grew up with the show. I I started watching regular show again. I know you probably don't really. Yeah, I know you probably haven't watched it, but there was. uh, Sounds like an Adult Swim thing. No, it's it's it was a kid. It's a it was a show on Cartoon Network, but it had it it was running alongside like Adventure Time and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But there's references in it that I don't know if I would have gotten when I was a kid. But they like they go to this place called Wing Hut or um, fucking Wing Stop or something like that, and they treat 
eating wings, like drinking. So whenever they start <laughs> eating tons of wings, they get fucking drunk. <laughs> fucking, I love stuff like that in kids shows when it's like stuff you don't get when you're a kid, but as an adult, you can see it and be like, oh yeah. The stuff they put in there for adults. Yeah, so exactly. Watch it. Will you jump down the hole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no. I don't really want to. Down in a hole. Ugh. Hmm. Okay. And we'll see what's up down in this hole in the next episode. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> All right. I mean, if if you want to find out what's down here, you can hit that bell icon to be notified of when the next episode goes up. Like me. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I, I've actually, I turned the bell on. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Which is funny because we're, we're number, we're number one on my like recommendations, which I was like, oh, cool. That is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, we'll see you next time. All right, bye.